Hi everyone, and welcome to episode 5 of Comics from the Multiverse, the DC Comics podcast from the Melfuzz Podcast Network. I'm Peter, and I may no, no longer be currently in the EU. Uh, Con- <laughs> Con- Connor's here. And, I, and I'm definitely not. <laughs> and also Matt's here, but he was never in the EU, so he's fine. No, never did it. America. <laughs> <laughs> Uh dear. Alright, so yeah, DC Comics. We talk about DC Comics every week, and this week we've got six books to discuss. We've got The Flash Issue 1, Wonder Woman Issue 1, Aquaman Issue 1, Detective Comics 935, Action Comics 958, and Justice League 52, which is the second Justice League book in as many weeks, because they had to quickly get these out before the and new book starts. And this one was much more noticeably later than last week's one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this was clearly meant to be out a few weeks ago. Whereas last week you could have gone, sure, they're launching the, the prologue on the yeah. same day as the yeah. book. This was at least two weeks late. Also, this one was meant to be before the other one. Like, they swapped the numbers. Yeah. Because in the original solicits, the cover for this one was 51. So they and in the original solicits, 52 wasn't Titans, it was Green Lanterns. Yeah. When I say original solicits, I actually mean the revised one. So that it's <laughs> changed multiple, is what I'm saying. The whole thing is a bit of a mess. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to talk about that. So that's the six DC books we're going to talk about today. Uh, before we get to that, though, it's a special week of the month because it's Solicits Week. So we have some some news for September. We spoke about some of the stuff they'd announced like early last week, as they uh, sometimes like to do, because they're because they're like that. But uh, we got the full solicits this week um, on Monday. So I'm just going to list off what we're getting each week in September. Uh, right. to see how your weeks are shaping up. There is one notable absence. I will not tell you where Red to the Outlaws is coming out <laughs> because I never bothered noting it down. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. We don't expect to need to know that. Yeah. No. I uh, mean, that's so, the only book that he's working on who, from henceforth, the writer of that book was he who will not be named. That, that uh, is the only book in all of Rebirth where I instantly yes. went that is not getting a second issue from me. Yeah. All the yeah. others, it's like, maybe. Even even some yep. of the ones I'm sketchy on, I'm like, maybe. That one, no. Yes, he, yeah, he hasn't earned it. He, he hasn't shall not it. be named, yes. Uh, but so, yeah, so uh, first week of September, on the 7th, uh, you're going to get Cyborg Rebirth, issue one, which is the new one for the week. And then you're also going to get Aquaman, issue six, Batman, issue six, Green Arrow, issue six, Green Lanterns, issue six, Harley Quinn, issue three, Justice League, issue four, Nightwing, issue four, Supergirl, issue one, and Superman issue six, so that's the first week. Um, that's pretty cool. And I'll, what I like about this whole double shipping schedule is that you got you get your main Superman and Batman book, but then in the next week, which is the fourteenth, you kind of get that too, but uh, with even more. So uh, on the fourteenth, you're going to get Action Comics nine six three, All Star Batman issue two, Batgirl and the Birds of Prey issue two, Detective Comics nine four zero. Uh, the Flash issue six, New Superman issue three, Suicide Squad issue two, Superwoman issue two, Wonder Woman issue six, Deathstroke issue two, and Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps issue four. These uh, weeks are getting pretty packed. They are, aren't they? Yeah. Luckily, they're all two ninety nine, so I can justify it. Yeah, yeah. I'm more thinking it's, it's going to be a challenge to read these all in, yeah. in the yeah. time before we record more than anything. Uh, well, I mean, I'm expecting a couple of them to get dropped by a few of us, you know, so it'll yeah. whittle down a little bit, but at the same time, I'm kind of happy, like, I'm, I almost feel like right now, getting the five per week is not enough, like, I'm like, oh, I've they're, finished they're, already. They're, they're, they're easing us into it. It's yeah, just like, they're easing yeah. us into it, but I'm like, I could go for a few more than this, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm quite okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then... On the 21st of September, uh, we're getting new books from... We get Trinity, issue one. Uh, Raven, issue one, which is, of course, a miniseries that we said last week. Uh, going to be six issues long. We get the start of the Batman and the Night of the Monster Men crossover. I think I remember that title correctly. Uh, that's Batman, issue seven, and Nightwing, issue five. Plus, we're also getting Aquaman, issue seven, Cyborg, issue one, Green Arrow, issue seven, Green Lanterns, issue seven, Harley Quinn, issue four, Justice League, issue five, and Superman, issue seven. And then on the 28th, uh, nice nice and simple for Wednesday month, which I like. I hate 5th Wednesdays. They always mess things yeah. up. 
Uh, more, more on that later. Uh, new books, we get Teen Titans Rebirth issue 1, Batman Beyond Rebirth issue 1, then the third part of the Batman crossover with Detective Comics 941, and then regular books we've got Action Comics 964, Batgirl issue 3, Blue Beetle issue 1, The Flash issue 7, Suicide Squad issue 3, Titans issue 3, Wonder Woman issue 7, <laughs> Deathstroke issue 3, Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps issue 5, and finally The Hellblazer issue 2. And I know Matt's disappointed that it's not in the DC solicits, so I'm just going to say it for him. Squirrel Girl is also a thing that exists over at Marvel. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. For that. new people, Matt just likes when I say Squirrel Girl. It, it amuses them. The double R's are fantastic. With the L. Oh, man. Yeah. R's and L's together are, are my weaknesses. So easily pleased. It really is. Well, just because the first time it happened, it came from out of nowhere, and <laughs> we had to pause because I couldn't stop laughing. So, <laughs> this is much more managed. Yeah, yeah that's true. <clears throat> you know, uh, you just mentioned how oh, I'll be all right because they're all two ninety nine, but old star yeah. Batman's not. Yeah, I can make an adjustment for that. It's yeah, that's yeah. that's four ninety nine, isn't it? Is that every issue or just the first yeah? One? No, even the second yeah. issue here. Yeah. Well, it's is forty pages. Yeah, that's yeah. true because they said there's going to be like. Well, there's going to be the main story, and then there's always going to be backups. Yeah. So, I'm assuming that means like 20, 25 pages of you know the regular story, and then. So. Yeah, I mean, it's still weird having it be two dollars more than everything else. I mean, it's a special event. It's only twenty four issues too. Yeah, and it's single shipping. It's not a double. Yeah. So. so yeah. I mean, I suppose they, what they could have done instead is split it up and do a double shipping yeah but they decided to go for this format instead yeah I, I almost wish they had and had like one issue and then it's like had the backups like slightly extended into their own issues basically well, they, maybe they, do two backups per issue they could have done but may, maybe the reason they're not doing that is because he wants the backup artist to be completely rotating maybe it's not like an arc yeah. but he's bringing in like guests uh well i i know it's complete the all the backups are different except one of them, which has it, it is recurring. Like there's one backup artist, right? Okay. Like, that that is doing more than one. All the uh, others are only doing one. I think. I don't know. Maybe they're trying to make this all star thing. They're trying to bring some prestige back to that name. So they're yeah. making that the. This is a yeah. big once a month book. You get your second story, um, with one of the bigger Batman writers from the you know recent memory, with a. Yeah whole you know rota- rotating door of like although the jrjr art should decrease it by a dollar <laughs> that's just me. i agree i don't think the cover that he did for issue one is any good but you know that's just uh, i think the issue two covers a bit better yeah yeah fair enough um but yeah we talked about a lot of the new stuff last week because they pre-announced it uh the, what they didn't uh talk about last week was trinity issue one so i, I think we'll just take a moment to say that i think we're all looking forward to that because it's uh yep Manipole, yeah. and you know, uh, there was some preview art. I think it was put up on Twitter for the first issue. Just mm-hmm. well, there was an image of Batman, an image of Superman, and an image of Wonder Woman, and they all looked gorgeous, of course. Yep. So yeah. uh, you know, looking forward to that. Um, we talked about the Batman crossover last week. Uh, mm-hmm. Did but, Did we talk about Cyborg last week? It... I don't think we did. I don't think that came up last week. No, I don't remember talking about it. Uh, so that's the other new thing for September. Yeah. And. Uh, I'm t- I'm curious to try that. I don't care about Cyborg. They've tried repeatedly for years to make us care about mm-hmm. Cyborg and just kind of failed. Um, the pitch the writer gave at WonderCon was at least interesting. So, yeah. yeah. See, I I don't know what to expect from the Rebirth issue at all because it's basically just a pitch of Cyborg's origin in a two sentences. Ah, oh, jeez. Yeah. It's just like I I don't know. Is is this supposed to be an issue recapping his origin? Essentially, I I don't know what it's going to be. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, honestly, though, like maybe he could use a good version of his origin for modern readers. I mean, I mean the one that John's got already the minute. did that yeah. in Justice yeah. League, like... and the description of this sounds pretty much. I mean, because he's still a, a Justice League co-founder. Mm-hmm. So I would assume it's the same origin that we got early in New Fifty Two. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they'll, they'll delve more into it. Um, but they need to make us care. So given us more meat to his origin beyond what we got in Justice League, is probably not a bad idea. Yeah. Um, 
admittedly, I have to admit, my appetite for Cyborg does not extend to two issues a month, but we'll give it a fair shot, and we'll see, we'll see how yeah. it pans out. Yeah. Uh, so that, that's that's the new book uh, for September, Cyborg, Blue Beetle. Oh, sorry, Blue Beetle's end of August. Sorry, I'm scrolling up instead of scrolling mm-hmm. down. Cyborg. Um, Trinity, Raven miniseries, Teen Titans and Batman Beyond are all the new books for September. So, um, what will be interesting to see if there's any new stuff in October, because other than JLA and Super, Super Sons, Sons. Yeah. and whatever else... The Earth 2 book that they mentioned. Yeah, I, I think I think that's just going to be GSA now. I don't think that's going to be a thing. Do you think? Because obviously Earth 2 Society, is that what it's called at the minute? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's ending in September, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, right, okay. So... So it's Teen Titans, the 52 Yeah, version. yeah. But obviously that makes sense, because Teen Titans is starting in September mm-hmm. as well. So with this, is is the new one starting in October? It could do, um, if they want to keep that going. Uh, but it, it's weird, though, because that mysteriously... It was on that first list of books that they announced for Rebirth, and then it's never been mentioned since. Well, no, I think it has. Along with Gotham Academy, they said it's just kind of carrying on. It's It's like it's... You know that they're doing a new book, like Gotham Academy has. I think it's called Semester Two or Second Semester or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, but it's not actually part of Rebirth. It's just carrying on. Earth Two was doing the same thing. They said. All right, so I'm not going to be reading it then. Yep. <laughs> That's yeah. Fair enough. Okay. I, I gave it enough time, and now if they're going to bring back the original Justice Society, it's kind of redundant. And that will be on Earth. Well, whatever that's Earth, uh, not Earth one, yeah. but you know what I mean. <laughs> like, wherever Johnny, Th- wherever Johnny Thunder was, that's yeah. where. Yeah, yeah. Prime. We we'll call it Earth. Is it still Earth Prime? I don't know. Earth Zero. I don't know. I, I think we can go with Prime. Earth Six to Nine. Let's call it that. Marvel had Six One Six for so long. We can just pick a random number and go with it. It's true. <laughs> I'm sure they'd like us to believe it was Earth Fifty Two, but. Ah, oh, there you go. That was an idea. Oh, it was Earth, guys. It was Earth Zero because it was the Keystone in the machine. Oh yeah, you're right. That, mm. That's why. And then, which mm. caused problems with Earth One versus Earth Two. And, and then it that. just spirals from there. And then it spirals from there because of Morrison. But uh, then they completely madness. undid that as soon as they hit convergence. So let's not talk about convergence, <laughs> <laughs> please. The only good thing to come out of that is is John Kent. Yeah. Right, yeah. as let's get past the madness that is solicits. Uh, anything else sticking out of the solicits you want to mention? Any particular descriptions or covers you just want to point? A couple, a couple of really nice covers that I loved was the Green Arrow one that they showed. Yeah. And the Superman one, which I thought was just... that Those two were the, the standout ones for me. I also like the idea of a Gary Frank Action Comics mm. uh, variant cover. Yeah. So I love everything he does with Superman. There's also one of the issues of Green Arrow has a different... Oh, both of them, actually, a different artist. And it's not one of the ones that they scheduled. It's uh, Stephen Byrne, who you might know off Facebook, does a lot of... He does do a lot of DC drawings on there. That's Um, cool. Yeah, he's really good. You should check his page. But, like, it it made me even more excited. And, and Uh, obviously, I love the first year. Well, he's doing the... Yeah, he's doing the whole art, not just the covers. Yeah, yeah, he's doing both those That's issues. Cool. Yeah, um, I agree with Superman. I also, I mean, we already we'd already seen it from WonderCon, but I actually do really like the Supergirl issue one cover. Yeah, yeah. see, that's why I didn't mention Trinity because I thought ah, it goes without saying, given that we saw it so long ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so no, no, that, that'll do the solicits then. Let's not harp on those too much because yeah. we could be here all yep. day reading through all those. So let's um, get into some books and talk about books and stuff. So, I think we're going to do The Flash issue one first, mm-hmm. which is written by Joshua Williamson and art by Carmen Giannaminko. Uh, nailed it. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. So, The Flash, we... At least me and Matt really liked the Rebirth issue. Connor was a little bit more... I still liked it. You still liked much, it. Yeah. yeah you, you weren't, but you weren't over the moon with it as much as me and Matt were. Uh, which, you know, fair, fair, fair. Uh, so, this is issue one. And this one, you know, it, this, this, this does feel like, you know, Rebirth issue was kind of a, on its own, well, not completely on its own, but, you know, it felt like a one-shot, whereas now we're getting into the, the first issue of an arc. Yeah. And, uh, of course, I think we don't have to repeat the fact that the art's gorgeous, because we all, we all really like that. I think any time he's on art, that goes without saying. Mm-hmm. 
at this point, and it'll be more if we notice something wrong with it that we'll have to bring up the art. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I, th- I think, just to reiterate something we said last time, but uh, the layouts and the way he's got certain panels at an angle and, you know... It, it's that angular stuff for, like, speed and stuff, isn't it? It just yeah. Yeah, yeah. It flows into the whole book. Yeah. When it, when Nothing's it, straightforward. Everything has a kind of tilt to it. Yeah, yeah. even when it is just squares, they're not yep. quite the same size. Right. Yeah, um, like... This is a very simple little thing, but I really like uh, when he arrives at the the, the the scene with the fireman near the start. Like, mm-hmm. not only is that panel sort of tilted at the top towards the reader, uh, his foot's also sticking out at the bottom of the panel. Yeah. Uh, it just gives this real sense of. Like, it's like he's quicker than the than the page. Sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. So some of them, like on the next page when he's trying to get to the crime scene, it just bleeds over into the yeah. panels. Yeah, yeah, so. it's really nice. It's really nice stuff. It's got a good energy to it, which the Flash mm-hmm. should have. Uh, so, I thought about story then. So, uh, we set up, you know, some of uh, Barry's co-workers. Uh, is it Kristen and uh, Detective August, who of course is going yeah. to play into this uh, towards the end of this show a lot more. Uh, we got him working the crime scenes. We set up the idea that he's always late. It does feel like an issue one because it does re-establish his origin a lot, but we got a couple of pages at the start that just explains... Yeah. Uh, and the double page spread does go into all the rebirth stuff again, but I kind of forgive it that because it's a one, little it's a little you know. clunky, but it's kind of necessary for anyone who skipped the rebirth issue. Yeah, um, even even though in the solicit they did give you a warning, make sure you go read rebirth. Yeah, I, I think it's more for anyone who's new to comics, people yeah. who maybe watched the Flash TV show and thought, yeah. "I'll try the Flash number one." Yeah. Um, but I like that. I like that he brings it up, and that time's been stolen, and he mentions that Batman's already on it, Wally's on it, you know, over the Titans, yeah. you know. So I like that he acknowledges it. My only complaint, in terms of him acknowledging stuff, is I really would have loved when he goes to see Iris and uh, New Fifty Two Wally. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to keep calling him that because it's nicer than calling him Black Wally. That feels a bit. Uh, <laughs> it feels just wrong, doesn't it? Even though there's a white Wally and a black Wally, so but yeah. Uh, we'll call it New 52, Wally. Call him non-ginger, Wally. Yeah, non-ginger. <laughs> or young Wally. I mean... Young Wally, yeah, young Wally works. But uh, when, he, when he goes to see them, I really would have loved just one narration box of Barry saying how hard it is talking to her knowing stuff. Yeah. Like, that's the only thing I think's missing in terms of, of him acknowledging what he knows about Rebirth. <clears throat> yeah, it is a little absent. Uh, that, that, that bummed me out a little bit, but... You know that's that, that that is the extent of really my complaints here. Uh, I like the banter they had. I like the young Wally. He's like, uh, you know, he's like, yeah, friends, sure. You're worse than kids at my school. I like that line. Yeah, yeah. It, and also, it's given me a sense of this new Wally because this is really the first time I've read him. Mhm. Because I, 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 I didn't read. Unless you read the Vendetti stuff, yeah. but even then, let's. I I, I think I saw the fir- I read the first few issues that he was in it because I was yeah. trying it at that point. Mm-hmm completely but, different yeah this is immediately much better than anything that I read yep. from the day yeah yeah he's given him an attitude he's given him a personality and it's nice it's to get, nice to get a no, get to know a new character um, although it would be nice if he gets a nickname just so we don't have to keep you know new 52 Wally young Wally give, give him a nickname well, well I mean we, we, we know what's <clears> coming <throat> soon we can like Kid Flash yeah true right. yeah. yeah that's probably the best thing to do is call him Kid Flash <laughs> that's easier yeah. Um, well, it just just because that said, what's what's Wally's like superhero name now? Other Flash. We just <laughs> yeah, because they just say he's a Flash, so I, I'm just calling yeah. Wally. Like it's the same white power. Wait, that's wrong. He's got the white lightning. So oh jeez, Matt, <laughs> jeez, you you oh jeez, that's a complete total slip. You you were um, going on a a different path there. Yeah, the um. <laughs> Because the solicits made the point that his lightning is white and it's a little bit different. Mm, yeah. You know, not like berries, which is gold or yellow. I wonder. <laughs> I, I wonder. Uh, I forgot what I was going to say there now. Well, the point I was going to make before that, though, was uh, most of the Titans have kind of dropped their superhero names in a weird way. Mm-hmm. Like, Dick's still Nightwing, but Donna Troy is Donna Troy, Garth is Garth, you know. Yeah. Uh, Roy is oh you're here <laughs> <laughs> you know like, most of them don't really have like their yeah, aliases anymore point. you know but all kind of like Wally West yeah so you just be Wally I, I think that's fine okay yeah 
but uh, he's a flash. And I, so, um, but yeah, that was nice. Uh, them them having a little sit down, and uh, this was kind of character stuff, and other than setting up the will they won't they with uh, Barry and Iris, which is obviously a will they, not a won't they. But well, yeah, and Patty's not in the picture at all. Nah, she's not. So <clears throat> that's nice. Yeah, that simplifies things a little bit. Um, but it sets up the themes of the episode. Uh, the episode, the issue. Episode. Uh, it does feel like an episode, though. It does. it does in a weird way, yeah. Because it brings. Because he talks about what's bothering him and how he wish he could do more, and it, it all feeds into the next part, which I think is the best uh, chunk of the issue. Is he has to deal with both the fire and the uh, mm-hmm. the crime that's going on. Wait, and, and the he's fire's, convinced he can do both. Yeah, he's convinced he can do both, but he can. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I and. Kind of going back to the art and the layouts, but it's also the, the writing as well. Just the way it flips between the two, the two mm-hmm. scenes, as he's drawing about the, the burning building and saving people, and he's narrating. And again, we talked about how the the angles of the, the panels represent the speed. There's a really great page here as he's uh, bringing out someone from the burning building, and we're seeing what's going on with Detective August and the other side of the page. Mm-hmm. All the panels with him going fast are all angled extremely, mm-hmm. but the panels with uh, the detective and that part of stuff going on are all just regular squares, yeah. and they're, right. they're all they're all blue as well. Like there's, you know, one side was on the the page before as well. It plays the same blue versus the the orange. Yeah, but yeah. Right. It's also what I think is the most tightly packed page in the issue, where everything's a lot. There's a lot more crammed on. There, there are more more thinner, and it just gives that impression of you have to kind of read it quick because there's more of it and you just kind of, yep. it flows through it and it's yeah. it's really him rushing against everything. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of, uh, lot of thought went into this in terms of the layouts, which is really, really nice. Yeah. Um, and he has to go save some kids. One of the kids is wearing a Superman shirt as well, amusingly. Yes, I appreciated that. Mm. <laughs> That's just a bit of world building and it lets you mm-hmm. feel like everyone's a part well, of it. Well, you think kids would, and this is not the Man of Steel universe where he's a <laughs> terror... So yeah. kids would want to be wearing well, Superman. You would, wouldn't you? Because it's it's no different to people who wear like sports shirts. They're they're, right. they're, they're heroes yeah. essentially. Right. But this is but just more literal. Actual, yeah. 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 So he runs off to try and get uh, to August, and he's he's too late, which is really nice. Or he, he thinks he's too late because again we have the two panels going down the side oh. the side of the page with him running there and the guy taking the shot at the detective. And it looks right. like he's not going to make it. But of course, we turn the page and he's actually struck by lightning instead. To hell with yep. the bullet. The because of a bullet, yeah. we get lightning. Worst luck in the world. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dear. Um, so then we get a page where it teases what's going on here and we see like the the streaks of lightning and there's like a fire mm-hmm. in the lightning like punching out the, uh, the bad guys. And I, yeah. I wasn't quite sure what it was getting at on this page. Right yeah. away, because I was because we know Godspeed's coming just from you know announcements and so. And I was like, is this Godspeed speeding in here? Mm-hmm. Um, and then you get to the final page, and it looks like it's actually Detective August who right. has had a burst of speed and like punched them at super speed without realizing that he's doing that. Um, mm-hmm. so I do we feel about this show overall then? Because I've kind of just sort of rattled through what everything. <clears throat> everything. So, so, there was gone. Go ahead, Connor. I was just saying it was really interesting at the end there because we knew that there was going to be this. Like a uh, speed force storm, where there was going to be a lot right. of getting powers. Yeah. Well, it's worth noting that the uh, the just the text like teasing the next issue says the storm is just getting started. So presumably yeah. next time right. it's going to be lightning it off all what, the place. What, what was interesting to me though is I wasn't expecting anyone in the supporting cast mm. that that Barry knows on a personal level. I thought it would all kind of be just random for the most part. Yeah. yeah well, okay. Could, Knowing could, Godspeed's mo, I don't think August is going to be around that long. Well, I, I, I want to make some bets right here. Is yeah. anyone willing to bet that August turns out to be Godspeed? No, I I considered it. I considered it. I no. just I don't know, especially with the TV show and the history of characters close to Barry turning out to be villains. I just feel like, <laughs> and I believe in an interview he did say that uh, Godspeed does have a, a personal connection to Barry on some like that. It's someone that he, he knows on some level. They have a connection mm. of some sort. See, this is my one take back, is they did a story like this in the New 52 with Manipul and Butchado to where people that had gotten trapped in the Speed Force came back and then the new Reverse Flash yeah. was taking taking their powers and getting more speed so he could go backwards. 
And, I mean, I don't think it's going to be the exact same, but when we find out that Godspeed is stealing their speed powers, I would hate for it to be one of the guys that was there. Do we know that he's going to be stealing powers from other people? That's what the... So, he's stealing their speed, is what it said in the... So that's okay. it. Okay. Oh, right, okay. I didn't... I thought Connor just yeah. made a reference to that. Oh, no, 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 yeah. I read it in the solicits that he's stealing their speed. All so... Right, okay. <clears throat> um, well, I don't know. I, 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 I like the issue. I thought it was a uh, fun set up some character stuff. Um, mm-hmm. It's a pretty decent cliffhanger at the end. Uh, sets up what, what's going on. Oh, yeah, it's still all very well told. I don't yeah. exactly know where it's going. I just... I would hate for it to be August just because he was there when Barry was made. Mm. You know? It, it, it feels a bit easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I'm thinking it may not be, but at the same time, right. I immediately thought it was a possibility. You know, it immediately yep. crept it in my head. Um, but I think the standout for me in this issue was the uh, the, the drilling scenes of like Barry saving people at the burning yep. building and what was going on at the crime scene. I really it like really that. worked. It has so much tension, and like you, you can feel the the choice that he's trying to make. Yeah, well, and you can feel Flash moving through the panels too. Yeah, yeah. which that's and, tough to do. And Williamson's got uh, got the voice down for Barry, so. Yep. I'm, but well, this issue's, like, I think, I think the rebirth issue for me, and Matt may agree with me here, had a mm-hmm. bit more of an emotional, like, punch. Yep, definitely. But this, you know, th- this made me really, like, alright, I'm, I'm definitely into this run now, like, I'm really looking forward to the rest of this, because mm-hmm. it's, like, it's been told so well, like, I'm just, I'm really into that. I think I would agree that the rebirth issue was, had the, the more emotional core. But I much preferred this issue. I think it was just a much better issue. It sets up the story. I know what I'm actually getting now, rather than just knowing that he gets the voice. Ah, know what you're getting is overrated. Take your take your reason and go spit. Right. I, I think this was a better issue in general. Uh, that's not. I, I can see why you'd think that. I think, but for me, emotional like impact is always going to outweigh some other oh, stuff. Fair enough. You know, like if I feel something, then. Not that I didn't feel anything for this, I thought this was a great issue, but... Well, yeah, it just, yeah. it's... When the Flash deals with such legacy, and then this gets into the nuts and bolts of a story, Yeah, it's yeah. two different things. That said, it's nice to be reading Flash again and enjoying it. Yeah. It's yeah. also, it's oh. nice that you may have a good relationship with the new Wally, and, like, yep. actually help train him, and, you know... Well, that was a problem with the last run, is he made him so adversarial from the start yeah. that there was no chance for them well, to have a decent relationship. Here, at least, Wally just seems like a... Smart ass teenager. Yeah. Hmm. So and not just someone that outright hates the Flash. So. Yeah, because he, he says to Iris that uh, Iris being friends with the Flash is a, a plus. It's cool. Yeah. 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 So no, nah, um, nah, I, I thought it was solid first issue. Um, mm-hmm. really, really enjoyed. Uh, really enjoyed that. So. I guess that'll take us on to yeah. Wonder Woman issue one, uh, written by Greg Rucka and art by Liam Sharp. Yep. Now now the Sharp stuff starts. Yeah. He started and... in the last issue too. Yeah, well, we got yeah. a few pages in the last issue. But That's this a start. Is... That's a start. Well, sure, but... Let's just say that it was worth the wait because the art throughout is fantastic. Uh, yeah, oh, it is. I think the art's always good, but particularly the pages with uh, Wonder Woman and like the forest and stuff. Yep. Uh, really, really like that stuff. Again, I, I, think, I think I mentioned it when we spoke about the, the Rebirth issue, but it's the colours that, that really make it stand out for me. Mm. Yeah. Like the, the, the pencils and the inks are great, but it's the colours that kind of give it the distinctive feel. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's also the way that, that Sharp does motion, like when she jumps off yeah. the cliff. And we know she can fly, so the fact, like, the way he plays with the water... And yeah, like she it, it she pretty. impacts her environment that she's yeah. in. So. Yeah, um, I I don't think it was amusing enough. If you go to the very start of the book, mm-hmm. um, because I I, I I complained about the rebirth issue a lot, but and said that it felt a bit <clears> of like a muddled, you know, mostly just explaining yeah. the fact that things don't add up. And I thought that the first page of this comic almost just oh. did the entire rebirth issue in a couple of panels. Yeah. Where she says the story keeps changing, nothing makes sense. There you go. That's the rebirth issue. <laughs> but also, her ch- it opens with "I will have the truth." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, no. And as soon as I saw Jungle, I was like, okay, I, this is heading to someplace fun. 
Yeah. So. yeah. Um, and also, one thing this had that the Rebirth issue didn't have as well is a, a another story to follow. We're getting a supporting mm-hmm. cast. Obviously, Steve Trevor's quite common to show up in Wonder Woman. Uh, he's looking like a gruff, you know... Um, I'm getting too old for this shit sort of action hero at this yeah. point. Uh, he almost looks like a like a proper war veteran at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Which is cool, because Wonder Woman's a warrior, and like that's kind of what a lot of their appeal to each other is, I think. Yeah, and and previously, we kind of used to get Trevor hanging around Argus, yeah. and you forget, like, he was a pilot at one point, right? Like, that's how he crash-landed. Yeah. I, I, I will say that that was one of my few issues with the art. I think it was one of the first pages with Trevor. It might be the first one. Let me just check. Yeah. His arm is like huge. Just the front arm. Well, yeah, he's all huge. Like... Yeah, yeah, but it looks out of proportion, like the way it's yeah. framed. I don't know what it is. Well, yeah, I mean, but the, just to get to the point that he's in the middle of crap, you know? Yeah. So, because he doesn't look like that the rest of the issue. He doesn't, no. So, I think it's just the way the arm's meant to be angled, because it looks like he's sort of yeah. twisting his arm to, like... Yep. Maybe, but it's like, all of it like, just looks too big. He looks like Brock Lesnar, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, big, huge shoulders, uh, blonde yeah, beard. It, it doesn't quite play up with, with mm. how we see him no. in the rest of it. Right, and I get that, but that's just a small... Yeah, it's, it's a small little thing. Yeah. So the issue basically we follow the two things then. So we've got Wonder Woman looking through the jungle, mm-hmm. looking for answers, and they keep it kind of mysterious what or who she's actually mm-hmm. looking for until the end. Which obviously, at the end, which I think is probably the most excited I got was just that yeah. reveal at the end of who yeah. she's actually there to see, um, and it's Cheetah, looking yeah. pretty badass in that last page. Yeah. Um, and also it reveals at the end that she can't find Thamascara, which is yeah. pretty big. It's a pretty big deal. So because yeah, she's been cut off. Uh, which is which I think is a really <clears throat> interesting setup for the rest of the story. Yeah. yeah, it's. I think that's going to parallel really nicely with the year one as well, because yeah. obviously that's going to be her leaving Themyscira, and this is her trying right. to get back. Yeah. Right. I think that's going to play off each other really nicely. Freaking A Rucker, man. Yeah. He knows. Yeah, he yeah. knows how to tell a story over the long run. He does. Yeah. Also, for Lost fans, yes, it, it did make me think I lost a little bit as well. Yeah. I want to back. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't want to get into spoilers, but I just for people who have seen Lost, don't know what I mean when I say that. Yeah, they got you. But no, so that's the story that follows Wonder Woman. And it's kind of separate. I mean, there's a couple of, you know, the, the other characters talk about her and they've mm-hmm. seen her, you know, the on surveillance or whatever. You know, there's a nice shot where right. they're looking at a photo and it's like, we caught her flying into the country. Yeah. yeah. I think they're in the same country. They're I their think mission, so. And they think yeah. that she's there to, to possibly interfere and help out with their mission. Yeah. Right. And no, she's she's doing she's her just, own thing. Yeah. So it was all... also the the picture that Trevor had of her. Mm. I hope that shows up in in the year that, one. That's Nicholas Scott that drew it. Yeah. Yeah, the artwork's yeah. different. different. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That that's that is Nicholas Scott. I saw it, she posted it on Twitter earlier. So they without the, the colors. Yeah, he's he's Rucka. I, I mean, I don't know if this is him that told him to do this, or if they have right. like, or they're collaborating as a team, like a trio, to like right. sync all this up. But there's some thought going into this. This is good yeah. planning. So someone has planned that out. Yeah, Isn't that it? is very smart stuff. Um, uh, and I, I like him saying that. Yeah, there's a thousand pictures of her, but this is mine. Like this is, yeah. So I assume he took it. That is what he's, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, also, so, also gets her height. She's at six three. That's right? tall. Which is, yeah. yeah, which is always that's cool. It's like. In, in New Frontier, when Cook has her standing up to Superman, and he has to look up at her, I think that's always a nice, hmm. nice take. So there's just like all these little things he's putting in there, you know. Yeah, but it, what I like about the whole reveal at the end, though, and that she's trying to find the mascara, is that she also she's looking for help from Cheetah, yeah. who is essentially her like the closest thing she has to an arch nemesis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd say that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that that just uh, I think even if you're not that familiar with Wonder Woman, if you're just vaguely aware of Cheetah and her being like the villain to Wonder Woman, is you're like, all right, this shit's serious. She's going to her for help. So I think the thing is, you don't even need to have that history based off just the page before, where you could see how vicious the attack on her is, like yeah. the claws and the teeth. Yeah. No. Yeah. She. They make her look goddamn evil and like she looks terrifying, like without even yeah. seeing anything of her. Complete really, complete except... redesign from we last saw her. Yeah. And that's good. And then the way, too, that uh, Wonder Woman calls her Barbara Ann. Mm, yeah. So it shows the familiarity there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like you're 
some monster cheetah it's you know right you know, know yeah you. they've got the history yeah, yeah. Right. so you get that sense of it you get you get that the stakes are high because she's getting help from her like or she's looking yeah. for help from her you know like mm-hmm. so all, all that just gives you this weight to what's going on and which is why i think this is like such a step up from the rebirth issue i think this is yep. yeah, that's a great issue um yeah. and that's just a wonder woman side of the story uh, Steve Trevor, of course, it ties in a little bit to Wonder Woman because uh, is it Etta, the uh, the, the woman Etta in command? Candy. Yeah, yeah. She uh, is sort of in command, and she's like Wonder Woman's here, and she tries to talk to Steve, and does he know anything about what's going on? And he's actually there. It looks like he's there to deal with uh, warlords and things like that. From what mm-hmm. we see, uh, we set up there's like a small village who's uh, like had all their sort of younger females kidnapped, Stolen. Mm-hmm. and uh, a lot of their younger men have been killed because presumably they were fighting back. Uh, so that also paints like the situation in the country in a sort of grim light. So you can sort of see how they may intersect at some point once Steve gets a hold of Diana. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and maybe he'll even right. end up try to help get to Themyscira. Not, I don't know how he would help, but well, he got there once before by accident. Yeah, he's, he's, he's been there. So <clears throat> right, last time I just flew over this general area and then <laughs> I balls shot down. I balls up. So I uh, someone go outside and hey. shoot me. <laughs> I mean, I mean more, more with loss and not not to spoil too much. But if the island moves, oh dear, you know, because it's magical, mm. like that could be cool. I, I, I always <laughs> see Themyscira less of a mover and more of a you only can see it if you're. See, I thought worldly. I, I, kind of thought, yeah. I thought the rule was you can only remember it if you've been there, like only if you already know the way. You can get there, sort of thing. Well, it's kind of like Kunlun and Iron yeah. Fist too. Like mm. they're all that mystical city based around Shangri La, yeah. where it shows itself only X amount. But yeah, Themyscira always to me was like because it's Greek in origin, it just keeps moving farther, you know, west. Yeah, as, as culture moves, you know, it kind of so. pulls the uh, the the labyrinth sort of thing, where yeah. it kind of moves. Yeah. I don't know if you can hear uh, it, but there's a wonderful sound of rain coming from it. And given how hot it's been today, I'm delighted to hear rain. That's, so, that's good. So, I'm very happy. Yeah, yeah. Suck, suck Definitely it, not Mr. here in the desert. So. Yeah, suck it, Mr. Las Vegas. You can uh, keep keep your sunlight. I, I, I want some rain. <laughs> uh, uh, one of them is great. Any, anything else anyone wants to add to it before we... Did anyone uh, get, else get a sort of Amanda Waller-esque vibe from Etta. Yeah. Oh yeah, because see, before they actually said who it was, I was thinking, is this Waller? Right. See, the Which... the only the only thing that makes it a little bit different is she seems subservient to someone else because she mm. has that that phone call and yeah. she, she seems nice. Yeah. <laughs> she seems alright. She, 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 she seems like she has superiors that she's yeah polite to. Yeah, yeah that, that was when I started to question. Oh, maybe it isn't her because she's answering to someone uh, in yeah. that way. But when she first showed up, I'm like, all right, so. Overweight, fat, you know, black women like. <laughs> could easily, it could easily. It have looked been like, yeah. She's it given orders. Like yeah. That's a point. Have we seen a redesign for Walla? She was skinny last we saw her, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if they just sort of say, "Oh, she's been eating some cheeseburgers for the last couple of months." She's, she's, she's back to being the wall. Yeah. yeah, the wall. Yeah, she has to have that nickname, and she can't be the wall if she's a twig. So. Yeah. The wall. <laughs> yeah, but now one of them in this one. Yeah. Really good. Fantastic. Yeah, great stuff. Really good. Um, and it's nice to be excited about Wonder Woman, who's a character who I honestly have only dabbled in a couple of times. I've never really, yeah, really properly get into <clears throat> Wonder Woman, so I'm excited to. Yeah, the first stuff I properly like really enjoyed was the, the Azarello run. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's Wonder Woman, which will take us on to Aquaman, uh, which is written by Dan Abnett and art by Brad Walker, and. Continuing the trend somewhat, although I wouldn't say it with the Flash, but continuing the trend of the issue ones being better than the the rebirth one shots, I think Aquaman falls into that category as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is the story of um, basically they're hosting a event at the uh, the embassy that they've built on dry yeah. land, and they've invited a bunch of people. And the two main characters we get to sort of, other than obviously Aquaman and Mira, who we know, but the two sort of main characters that we meet in this issue. As yeah. a woman from the British Royal Navy, yeah. uh, which no, and you, the, don't, you don't need to say. Yeah, that's what I was going to get to. Yeah, you don't have to say it's the British Royal because it's the only Royal Navy. But you know, uh, and also a journalist from the Daily Planet, which I thought was cool that it was a journalist from the Daily Planet. Yeah, yeah. You know, 
Um, you're so abrasive. You're like, how does Perry White deal with him? <laughs> maybe this is why he's covering stuff in Boston. No, no. See, what I think is he's when he's away from the office, he gets to showcase that personality of him. He, he's like gotcha. being assertive yeah. because he has to make up for when he's around Perry. Gotcha. Of course, that all turns out to just be <laughs> yeah. irrelevant. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so that's the whole thing. It's basically them coming to the embassy and experiencing everything and trying their food and... Uh, one of Ackerman's guards sort of flops a little bit with the the, the navy yeah. officer, and I, I liked all this stuff because it was very much a, a human perspective of everything that was going on. It really sort of put everything into well perspective for me. I think it's important because it's how <laughs> you would see it, isn't it? Yeah, like, it's how one of us would go there and look at this crazy building. Because I know when they released the preview pages, I was just like, it looks so out there. Yeah, it's very. The concept artist was like, you know, oh, I can do some really wacky shit with this. Yeah. Well, it looks like a but then they, they reference that, that those two characters yeah. talk yeah. about the building. And it, yeah. that was really nice to see. Yeah, and uh, it's really fun. And they even kind of make you care about the, uh, the guard, who, of course, you know, eventually Sorry. is the one who t- takes the... Takes the uh, well, and Abnett, the if you had read uh, when Abnett had taken over before Rebirth... Oh, Sark was a was a pretty. He was hmm. hanging around. Oh, yeah, before. but I I don't think he was. Yeah. It wasn't like overly memorable though. Like he didn't really have. No, but I remembered him as it's that one guy. It's not yeah, nice. yeah. It's not the guy but with the face. I feel like he's that one guy. guy. I, I, I feel yeah. like I'm kind of flirting with the the navy officer. You know, it gave him a bit more of a character. We kind of yeah felt something for him, so that when the Daily Planet guy uh, reveals himself to be. Uh, Black Manta, who apparently has uh, some sort of technology to cloak himself in yeah. a person. Uh, which, you know, whatever. Comics. <laughs> um, yeah, and like, going back through it, he's saying wowzers. Like, yeah. Black Man is really playing it up. <laughs> it's so obvious in hindsight, isn't it? Yeah. Well, well yeah. clearly, he's trying, to, he's trying to think, right, okay, I need to get in the mind of a ginger. What would they say? <laughs> you know? That's what he's thinking, right? Yeah. Wowzers, that sounds like something to say. When really what he should have been doing is just hiccuping all over the place. <laughs> so, you know, uh, so that's funny. But actually, my favourite moment in this, mm-hmm. all on just the plan to like, blow up, is uh, actually the page of uh, Black Manta coming through the water at Mira. Yeah. It's really badass. Because uh, he's like, of all the things he can lose, you're the most, or you, you will hurt the most. And it's just you can see the big red eyes and the shape of his suit like coming through the water at her. Yeah. Uh, it's see, really dark and Sometimes sinister. you think he has a really stupidly designed suit and then you get moments like that with playing with the shadow mm. and whatnot. And then you remember it also at one time he was an actual half-human, half-manta creature. Yeah. So I'll, I'll take the 60s design. I actually really like his... Uh, I've always really liked his helmet mainly because it is so distinct so you always know it's him. Yep. Red eyes are just evil looking and... Usually, if you get the right people colouring it, the chrome of the helmet looks really good and really distinct I as well. I think it's that idea that it's reminiscent of old-style scuba helmets. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Just, yeah. like, sleeker. But when he's standing there on dry land wearing it, you're just kind of like... It always looks weird on land. When yeah. the, when there's water around, it's, it's cool. always fine. It looks fine, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's why, you, when you see him at the start of the issue, uh, spying on them, he's not got it on. He's just... No. So... Yeah. Which I appreciated. So it, it does look a little odd when you know he's coming out of the the explosion. He's running away from that. Mm. Compared to where he's running out of the water, it just it, it takes on a completely it different is. life. Yeah. yeah, but that's fine because he's going to be spending a lot of time in the water. So that's true. Well, yeah, and yeah. again, it's it's a small thing, but I just always it just makes me laugh. So. Okay. Uh, so Aquaman and Black Manta have a bit of a fight. Uh, Mira is out for the count. Royal Navy officers try to help her. Uh, so I'm assuming she might be a recurring character since we, we got such yeah, an introduction I to her. I hope so. I quite like, liked her. Yeah. She had a strong personality. Yeah. No, I liked her too. Um, and we basically just... Uh, we kind of just end in a cliffhanger in mid-fight. Uh, Black Manta stabs Aquaman. And, uh, you know, <coughs> see you next... I was going to say next month, but it's not next month. See, yep. see you next issue. Yeah. Yep. So. Although, kind of is... In the next month, so you can't oh, just yeah. say. Yeah, in the next month. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not a month from now, though. Yeah. Do you know, do you... He leaves them with he's going to bring the end of fear. Ah, semantics. So. It's it's fine. It kind of feels like a very standard cliffhanger as opposed is. to some of the ones we've had. Um, but... I, I enjoyed the rest of the issue so much, though. It has actual attack on 
or, or attempted attack on Mirror was such a cool moment that um, you know I enjoyed this show. I thought it was better than the Rebirth issue. Um, I'm liking the sense of plot, the sense of threat from Black Manta, and how like determined he is. What? Well, yeah, yeah, I really like as well that he targeted them inside the embassy because mm. it's because yeah. embassies are supposed to be safe places that you can have these meetings and stuff. Whereas now it's from the human perspective and the aliens, like, are they safe in their own building? Yeah. That it's supposed. And to also, be it completely fucks with this whole like I'm trying to like build a bridge and make people feel safe around each other. Right. And it's like now it's like, the bridge. Yeah. 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 So uh, yeah, and now it's like well, clearly more of these Atlantes are going to attack it, even though. Black Manta isn't Atlantean, you know, but they're going to but, see it as, you know, the public will see it as, oh, as one of his villains or... Yeah, they'll they'll relate it right. to Aquaman. He's yeah. a target. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, we'll see how that plays out next time, uh, but, I, I, you know, definitely it was not one of the better issues I read this week, but it was solid. Like, I had fun and I like the yeah. characters and I'm, you know, I'm in for the next issue, so... Yeah, and definitely. Really can't complain. Um, So, next up... Uh, let's get to the the big numbers. Uh, we'll start with Detective, um, because action kind of ties into Justice League a little bit. Uh, so Detective Comics nine thirty five by James Tinning the fourth and art by Eddie Barrows. Uh, we liked this a lot two weeks ago when we read the first issue. Yep. Of uh, well, you know what I mean. First issue of nine hundred thirty fourth uh, issue. Yeah, nine hundred thirty fourth yeah. issue. <laughs> we read that last week. So uh, crazy. Uh, it's really crazy, but um, so I trust we enjoyed this again. Very yep. much so. Yeah, I, I can't imagine that our opinions would have went down. Um, and what I really, really liked about this, um, I don't know if I like it more than the last issue. Like, I'd have to really sit there and think about it if I'm honest to piece it because mm-hmm. I think the last one had the fun bringing everyone together vibe and doing the roll call. This one had more like. Characters get some cool moments in this one because get... it had some more relationship beats. Yeah, it did. It did. Um, but let's start with the first sort of chunk of the issue, which is um, their training and the reveal of their new base. Um, and I love that this team have their own base. Uh, yep. And yeah, it's I, I love that Tim designed it. Yeah, the Belfry. It's it's his yeah. thing. Tim Tim yeah. designed it. I love that there's. I, I love that it is. The, I love that there's a literally a giant bell. It's a bell tower. Oh. Yeah. You know? uh, so I think that's really, really cool. And Christ. they have their own danger room. Yeah, they're really playing up the X Men vibe, aren't they? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the mud room. They they use like excess clay face material <laughs> to build threats. <laughs> I really liked him. He was like, "Well, it would have been nice if you asked for the." <laughs> yeah. Asked if you could use it. Yeah. Was it says it says? Uh, yeah, and you could have asked how that that would feel. Well, is as if for him yeah. it's like torture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's good fun, but basically they're sort of like arguing about why they're still training, why they're not out in the streets yeah. doing their doing their thing, and uh, we get a lot of nice little character moments. Is like Batman saying like, why didn't he train? Like you know, spoiler, you you, you do complicated attacks, but you don't use your body to like breathe properly. And then yeah, Steph, as she's, pa- shape, as, she, as she's panting, like, hey, amen yeah. to that. <laughs> like, yeah. so that's a really funny little moment. Like she's like, yeah, yeah okay, right. Um, Nitty uh, calm down on those waffle stuff, maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like carbs. Uh, you need to cut the carbs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that, that's a uh, and Clayface has got a thing to cancel its powers a little bit, but no, yeah. it's, it's it's really cool. I I like the whole family dynamic uh, that we're getting from this. So, but I I love that when Dick like starts to like not argue with her, but he's like full on like you know, like why why are we not out doing stuff? I like how she's like. Well, go talk. Go talk to him then. Go talk you to mean, Batman. You mean Tim? That's Tim. a dick. Oh, I yeah. apologize. I apologize. Because Peter loves Dick. <laughs> I do love Dick so you much. Love... He just has to insert love... it everywhere. You love Dick, dick too. Dick on his mind all the time. Every, everyone loves Dick here. Let's not let's not deny that. <laughs> but no, I like the scene in like first we get to see because I didn't read Eternal, so I don't know if Tim and Cass were were actually a thing. I don't remember them being a thing. I mean, they were both—they both had their own storylines, but did they you, felt did very you mean, separate. Did you mean to say Cass? Yeah, so I said Cass. Okay. So Wait, I did Stephanie? I? Oh, that's what I meant. Holy crap! Uh, yeah. yeah. So, fuck you. At least yeah. I acknowledge my mistake immediately. You're sticking to your grounds. No, I meant Cass. Cass. No, Definitely no, no, Cass. No, 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 no. Oh, tell me something. Teen Titans. In that terrible run after Connor. Um. But you know, yeah. Steph. No, yeah. no, they had storylines in a tale, but they don't 
I don't think they had that many moments together. Yeah, not that I remember. Yeah. But here they are. Here yeah, they're, he, they're living together. Yeah, he, he and looks, that's cool. Well, I don't think they're living together. Because it, uh, it doesn't sound like he's always there. Because uh, like, he doesn't know that uh, Cass has been around. See, I took it as he stays there. Yeah, with, I just got the impression that he doesn't notice because he's always out doing... Yeah. It. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Doing yeah. Robin stuff. Or yeah. Robin stuff. Yeah, yeah, but if so, that's cool because that plays up on their dating relationship, and yeah, hopefully what... they they play it safe and she doesn't get knocked out. Yeah, yeah. I, I got that impression because we see him off with Batman, like yeah, on just one to one. So obviously he has his own life still away from her. Yeah. So I assumed that he that's why he wasn't always there when she is. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, maybe I, I I just got the impression that he spends the night. I didn't think he was living there with her. Mm. Hmm. I'll have to wait and see. I mean, do do the Bat Family really live anywhere outside the Bat Cave? Yeah, true. Not it really matters either way. I mean, it's the same no. end game. Well, no, but either I just wanted to say that I like their relationship. Oh yeah, yeah. And it felt very organic. So that's why I didn't know if it started in Eternal. No, or not. I don't remember it. Yeah, that this feels like just a, a nice way of introducing the idea and yeah. Uh, I, I think it helps you connect it by the fact that they're talking about non Batman related things. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's just a normal conversation. Yeah, because Tim's conflicted because he might be going off to university. He's got a he's got accepted to some somewhere to see. I can't remember what the exact with, with a genius grant, which again yeah. they're playing up his. Yeah, well, because obviously he, he built the thing and like uh, Batman's thing just before that scene actually when he's talking about, talking about uh, Batman says I know you always weren't ro- and insisted you weren't Robin. Now, admittedly, you could take that literally yeah. as a new Fifty Two thing. But I'm yeah. thinking I've been reading uh, like Catechism and Aftershock and stuff, which right. obviously was right in the middle of Tim's uh, Robin tenure. Right, and that's actually was making me think of a lot of the conversation I was reading in that, where Tim and Night and Nightwing as well, because uh, there's an issue of Nightwing back from back in those mm-hmm. early days with Chuck Dixon, where uh, Tim comes out in Nightwing for an issue and they they you know solve something together. But there's a lot of right. like talk between them that I found really interesting. It was Tim saying how. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you grew into Nightwing, you grew into your own thing, this has kind of become who you are, whereas he always seen his time as Robin as being like a temporary thing. Well, I think the thing is, right, right from his introduction, he isn't Robin for him. He's there because he right. knows that Batman needed a Robin. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And that's why he stepped up. So it was, it was never right. for him. Yeah, so to me, that, 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 to me, that conversation, though, is like, even though you take it as being like a New 52 thing, I feel like it's harkening it's, back yeah, to Yeah, it's a that. bit of both, isn't that's, it? Yeah. That's the character, though. You know, yeah. that, that plays that, and that's just Tinian has familiarity with it. Yeah, so. absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, absolutely. Uh, speaking on that page, it does it a couple of times in this issue, issue mainly on Tim actually, where they focus in on his reaction. It's uh, at the end of the page, and the and art's different. Yeah, the, all the colours yeah. and the pencils are all muted and shaded a bit more. Yeah, yeah that that kiss is actually really nice <laughs> looking. Yeah. Yeah, that's another one. It yeah. really makes them stand out against everything else on the page as the important moments mm-hmm. of the book, though. Yeah, because it's yeah. almost like Tim's the focal point in this. You know, he's our uh, our yeah. point of view character. You know. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. Also, I like the little joke that Cat uh, Cast doesn't like going to her own place. She either comes in and spends the night at Steph's or goes to uh, yeah. what's the other place she says she goes Harper's? to Harpers. Yeah, Harpers. Yeah. Harper. I like that they're Would acknowledging have... Harpers around and that they all yeah. know each other, which is good. Yeah. I, I feel like Harper will probably end up being a part of this book at some point. I think Tinian yeah. said she's coming at some point. Later yeah. on. Good, good, good. That's good. I like Harper. Because and... I know we've got yeah. a, a Steph arc next, and then I believe we have a Cass. Cool. And I think Harper might be coming in after See, that. See, I love that, that it can be a rotating like focus. Yeah. Like, everyone's always going to be in the arcs, but the, the focus yep. can... Yeah, the, the first arc will probably... I imagine it'll shift, because last week was probably Batwoman. Yeah, that's yeah. more of a Tim issue. Yeah. So maybe I'll we'll just go through each one of them in the first arc. Yeah. Um, oh, by the way, I like the small touch that Basil uh, still wants to go for additions because he says, uh, "Can I use this device to, to you know, hold my form?" <laughs> I, I think it's important to have things like that because it's another one of those just lets us remind him that he's not a bad guy. Yeah, yeah. It, it, right. And it helps us realize why he's on this team. Right. Yeah. Um, then we have a we have a quick scene uh, with uh, Kate and her dad uh, about. Just sort of reaffirming for people who are not familiar with uh, yep. what her dad's like and what their relationship's like and the whole thing about uh, what their family means and how he doesn't like the Waynes all that much and just it just sort of reaffirms all that stuff. I, I don't feel there's much more in this scene outside of that, but maybe 
No, for me, the only thing was I didn't realise that he knew that it was Bruce. Yeah. I can remember that, but I don't know if that was, like, something he always knew, or if it was, like, a New 52 edition. Yeah, I, uh, I don't remember it. That's, but but, but that's, that's the point, though. It makes it clear for us now. We know that now. We know he, just, he knows that. So. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's oh. kind of exposition, really, in that sense, but it does it by building Kate. Yeah. So, yeah. it's fine. Oh, I also like what it does with the Canes versus the Waynes. And yeah. how different they are, and that that was Martha's his sister, you know. So I had always thought they were related down through, but not directly. So the fact no, that Martha I, Wayne was I Martha think, Kane, I think that was established in uh, Gates of Gotham. Okay, I yeah, 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 yeah. Gates of Gotham. That was a good little mini, actually. That was right at the end of yeah, uh, yeah, kind of bridged between the old stuff and the New Fifty Two. Yeah. yeah, it was right before yeah. New Fifty Two started. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I played with the four different families, the Cobblepox and the, yeah. uh, what was Hush's family? The Elliots. Yeah, the yeah. Elliots, the, the Cobblepox, the Canes and the Waynes. The Canes and the Waynes. Yeah. The the, um, <laughs> the and the but that's all the thing. She goes from Martha Kane to Martha Wayne. <laughs> and then one day, you know? Bane showed up <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> to bring the pain. <laughs> I can keep going, so he's the one to rhyme. <laughs> Jesus. God, like, shoot him with Gavin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was a Everybody fucking play. obscure Everybody reference, play. man. It's me. What do you say? I'll eat pieces of shit like you for breakfast. <laughs> you eat pieces of shit for breakfast? Oh my no. god. That is Anyways. a lot more that is a lot more Adam Sandler referencing than I was expecting back, at the start of this episode. Yeah. Back when Sandler was palpable. Yeah. Uh so the final scene of this issue. Uh, and this tells me how quick this this issue goes in. I could, when I went, I actually saw. I didn't read them all a second time in full, but I sort of skimmed through them all again, you know, just to refresh my memory on everything. Yeah. And I couldn't believe that we got to this this scene so quickly. Like, man, I'm going through these issues so quick because I'm enjoying them so much. That so it's just, yeah. you know, I wanted to point that yeah. out. But uh, first of all, this is now the second Bat book and uh, Rebirth to feature the animated series Batmobile with the slight additions, of course, of the 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 head at the front, but. Uh, yeah, I nice. really hope this isn't the last of it. Uh, it yeah. seems like they've just decided right, this is the this is the Batmobile now for a while, like yeah, and everything. So uh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, and of course, this is just where we. And again, this is kind of along the scene with Tim, which was more Tim centric. This is the first just scene of Batman. Yeah. So I know Matt loves that it's not just all Batman all the time, which is nice. I do. Um, but, but it's yeah. also not the not the B team all the time too. It really mm. is a Batman. It's a Gotham book. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. Which is cool. Which is something that I think we all would really like, and we are liking it. So, uh, so yeah. Then, uh, what's the face? Is it Colony? The yeah. Colony. Yeah, the Colony show up, and uh, although that may have been the destruction of the Batmobile there, so maybe we'll get a new one next. <laughs> yeah, that, that's why I was also, a little bit concerned. <laughs> don't the vehicles for the Colony look like tumblers? They do. Yeah, I, I noticed yeah. that too. Which I thought that's a fun little take. Yeah. Uh, so this is just kind of the cliffhanger. It's just it's the villains that were hitting that last week uh, who were spying on them for some mysterious leader. And Batman still gets to have his badass Batman moment where they're like, right, we're taking you in. And he's like, you can try. And, you know, yeah. see, see you next issue. Uh, but no, really, not a really strong issue of Detective. I really... Lots of good character stuff. I love that so many people got good moments. Um, mm. And then the actual plot of with Batman is good fun as well. And, yeah, it's really yeah. shaping up as just a, a great book. Because as good as issue one of Batman was, and I thought it was great, I'm liking Tech more. I am too. Mm-hmm. So, oh, there you go. That's Detective Comics. So let's jump ship to Metropolis. Yeah. Uh, which, which are we doing first here then? Now we'll we'll do action first. We'll we'll save the the, the holdover from keep yeah keep with yeah, the big numbers. Yeah. To, of New Fifty Two, uh, even though this is, even though when we get to Justice League, it's firmly set post Rebirth, and there's reasons for that. But we'll get to that when we talk yep. about it. Yep. Uh, so we're going on Action Comics Nine Five Eight, written by Dan Jorgens and art by Patrick Zotcher. And uh, this was good, and I keep saying that. I Great. feel like. I feel like we we need a bad book at some point just so we can properly complain. I feel like we're just being sure. positive all the time. I, I, I can complain about the first funny. page. All right. Okay. On I think go. the first page is essentially pointless. It's it's just an exposition recap of what we just had, and the last issue was only two weeks ago, and then I just don't feel like that first page was necessary. Um, 
Maybe. Between, bet like between, the, between the last issue and the Superman the board, Rebirth. Though. Yeah, I just, I, just, you know. I just don't think it needed an entire page based off last issue and then the Superman Rebirth issue, which kind of covered all of this as well. Maybe. I, don't, I feel like... I feel like this is... Admittedly, I think they should just have a recap page with some text, but yeah. I feel like this is like the strategy at DC sometimes to, instead of a recap page, you give them the page of, here's the basic premise of what the fuck's going yeah. on right now. I know, but it's always annoying to waste a page well, on that. I, well, I see, get what you're with saying. Me, with, with reading all of these Rebirth books, it's good to have something to keep it in order, and this is what happened, yeah, and so we can just jump to the yeah. story. And if it's, if it's art benefiting looks people, fantastic, so, yeah. yeah. I think... Yeah, I think... I mean, you could argue that being every two weeks means that they don't have to do this as much. But at the same yeah. time, if you're reading a lot of books, and I can sometimes get jumbled because I read so, you read so yep. many books, you start to you forget do. things. Uh, so, it's kind of like how, no matter how many issues of Green Lantern we had from Jeff Johns, they always started with, my name is Hal Jordan, and I'm the Green Lantern of Sector 281. Yeah, and that's fine, Which, but I just don't think I need an entire page. Alright. Okay. Okay, Connor's been the negative Nancy. That's okay. Uh, we can get all the little positive stuff now. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. You know what? I'm not sure why, but I like this more than the last issue. And I don't think there's anything specific that's actually better, but I just, in general, liked it more. I agree. Yeah. I think it's I think it's the fact that we're past the start of the arc. It's just it's just going, and now it's it can get on with what it's doing rather yeah. than introducing everything. Yeah. I think I mainly... I think maybe it just flowed a little bit better. Maybe, maybe that's what it is. It just, well, like... All the pieces are in place yeah. for the story to go yeah. where it needs to go. Um, and um, even Mystery Clark, I guess we'll tackle him first. Uh, yeah. Like, even the thing about him, he's confused. Because actually, on Twitter, two weeks ago when the last issue came out, and some people were saying they were really confused about Clark <clears throat> and Superman right now. Yeah. Like, is there two Supermen? Who's this Clark? Like, they were really confused about everything. And I was sort of explaining what I could on Twitter in some responses and saying, like, well... Right. New 52 Superman's dead, this is pre 52 Superman, blah, 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 right? And so what about Clark? That's still really confusing. I'm like, it's okay, it's meant to be. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's the right? mystery. Yeah, yeah, that's the mystery of what's going on right yep. now. But I think this issue handles that really well because we hear Lois say that. We have someone actually acknowledge that. This is fucked up, what's going on? Yep. Uh, like flat. I mean, don't get me wrong, obviously Jimmy's acting like, what's going on? Lex is saying what's going on. But Lois distinctively said, because, you know, John asked the question, but didn't he die? Right. And she's like, yeah. yes, I don't know what's happening. Right, okay, good. We're all on the same page. <laughs> yeah, she, she's where the readers are. Yeah, exactly. So well, uh, that's helped. Now, uh, sticking with Lawson John, since we're on the subject of Lawson John, yeah. uh, I, I thought it was uh, really interesting watching them react to this in the news because Lois getting upset because she knows what this yeah. means and what this what happened last time. This, this is the Lois who held them in her arms. Yep. Yeah. And John being like, asking questions and then like, I can go and help. And I'm like, John, no, you're not ready for this, son. Like, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, you can see her li literally holding him in. Like, yeah, she's like, like yep. nope, nope. Yeah, yeah, she pulls deal. him in. Yeah. 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 So I, I thought that was good. I thought that had the nice uh, emotional side of things. Um, we'll talk about the mysterious watcher at the end. I think that's the most mysterious. Well, arguably, yes. Clark's the most mysterious thing, but this is the most mysterious thing of interest in this issue. Um, now. There's a danger going into this. If you don't like Doomsday, that a fight with Doomsday could be really uh, boring, not... predictable. Yeah, yes. but he has help now. Yeah, kind of. But I think there's, there's a few things he does here that Jurgens does that makes it really interesting. Um, particularly, like, Clark's narration, or Superman's narration, as yep. uh, he's fighting makes it a lot more interesting because he's internally going this feels like my doomsday but how could he be here like, this feels like the real doomsday like, that's that word the real is almost like again right. it's a reader perspective thing where this feels like the real doomsday not the shit not, in not what we had in doom yeah. <laughs> um, but then <laughs> his surprise when he throws him at the helicopter in that caption that says uh, doomsday using strategy what yeah <laughs> like and it's like oh this is interesting yeah there's something else going on doomsday is smarter than he was before What what's happening uh, so that was interesting. Obviously, the art's pretty good as well. All the fighting stuff, like, yeah. And I, I'm sure uh, when Superman like does the double punch to Doomsday and says this is a job for Superman, when Lex says he's going to go in and do it, I'm sure that made yeah. Matt, yeah. made Matt's heart yes, look it. a little schoolgirl. 
Yes, it so is. It's, it's interesting because this is just an issue long fight scene, essentially, and that, mm -hmm. you know, barring the, the flashes aside to Lois, yeah. and that could easily be boring. Right. But it, it's got so much interesting stuff going on. Uh, a big part of it is, is the Superman and Lex relationship rivalry. And that's, yeah. That's what I was going to say is like they're both trying to outdo the other instead yeah. of like actually actively working together. Yeah. to defeat this well, what's interesting so. as well is, is Superman like question himself like wait am I wrong about him like what's going right. on because you know he's, he he's is helping trying to help. Yeah. I, I yeah. think my favourite thing about it is it shows Clark as a human where he, he, he's competitive he doesn't want Lex to win it's, yeah, it's not, exactly. even though he's doing Ooh. the right thing Yeah. it's like nah I still want to be at the top yeah but even you know like superman catches the trade and lex is going for it and he's like right lex you save these people i'll go fight doomsday and then lex is like no 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 you save the people i'm going to go fight doomsday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. like they're measuring right. their decks right here yeah yeah they're and, about seeing who can get most pictures from jimmy basically yeah yeah um meanwhile of course the whole clark thing is going on and even lex is noticing i'm going what the hell and you know like so they're, they're, he's they're just really... standing there like clark doesn't know what to do yeah right so yeah. clearly, whoever this is, you know, has no experience of just standing on the sideline. Yeah, he, he's not Superman. He's just some version right. of Clark, which is right weird. We don't know what's going on there, but well, I'm sure well that's part of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. We'll find out. Um, of course, Lex is in over his head, and also Doomsday's about to waste him <laughs> at yeah. the end of the issue. And then we go back to the mysterious guy watching. Now, is this Mister Oz? Like, I can't remember what Mister Oz looked like. Yes. I showed up. I got Mr. the impression Oz. it was. Yeah. yeah. Right, so Mr. Oz, of course, if you didn't, if you're listening to or watching a DC podcast, presumably you did read Rebirth. So, but just to refresh yep. your memories, Mr. Oz was a mysterious character who showed up to, you know, old Superman, the real Superman, and said, "You and Lois and even New Fifty Two Superman are not what you seem." Yeah. Um. So this is this is cool. This is nice that that thread is actually continuing here. Um. Mm. And hopefully, if not this first arc. Maybe the second arc will be the story of like him realizing what he actually is, and maybe solving this this mystery. Hopefully, yeah. I mean, I think we're getting a clear idea of which books are the more you know following the story on from Rebirth. Yeah, yeah. Like Titans, this, Titans, obviously. Yeah. Um, Flash. Yeah, uh, we get we're getting a bit of a clear idea of where but we which, can follow those. That actually makes it feel like it's been really well thought out as Matt knocks things over and he's. Yeah, um, sorry. Um, yeah, it, it makes it feel like well, it's a universe thing, and it's yeah. going to be. In yeah, different they've, areas. They've put thought into it. They've said, right, this is where the thread's going to go. So, you know, Dan, you focus on this. You know, and they're in the writer's like, office, assuming they even meet in person yeah. often. You know, in uh, the email chain. Yeah, email chain, whatever. <laughs> on Skype. Do a Skype call, you know? Yeah. Je Jeff hosts the call, and then, you know, Dan and other Dan and, you know, uh, Joshua come in and they'll talk about me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but. Yeah, so it ends with just the Mister, you know, Mister Oz at the end, assuming it is him, and we think it is. Uh, yeah. Is like Kal El, what would you do next? Only then can I make my move, and that's the real question: is what is he planning? What is he doing? It's who is it? Because obviously Kal El, so he knows. Yeah, it's, he knows. Like we get the impression that he knew him anyway because you're not you're not who you are, like what you think. Right. But he says Kal El, so he must know him on like in intimately, like personal details. He knows. Again, there's a familiarity. Yeah. And it's almost like he's testing him against yeah. Doomsday. It's, it's, it's like a game of chess. Mm, I wonder who who wants to make people better by by testing. <laughs> who has Oz in their name? <laughs> I and, I, and, I, and I almost wonder if it's for the purpose of eventually taking on someone else that might be oh. responsible for everything. Yeah, like he's pushing One them. Might think. Yeah, because who who in the DCU? may stand a chance <laughs> you know and, and yeah and, and that's why you go with doomsday who beat him before yeah right yeah. but it make him even stronger or like well not necessarily stronger well, physically, that's the dooms but... well yeah that's the doomsday principle though you, yeah once but... you beat him you can't beat him the same way right so how does who's to say superman's not the same because he's not sitting here slugging it out with doomsday like he was yeah, yeah, he's trying to be smart. He's trying to fly him out of the earth. Exactly. And it's not working. Oh, and, yeah, you know. Superman trying to fly out a threat out of the <laughs> shop. Shit. Like, oh, dear. 
But yeah, so Superman taking a break from the fight to catch a train that's like getting <laughs> yeah. disrupting in the Which, chaos. Let's be honest. What type of monorail hangs under the the rail? A metropolis. That was weird. Monorail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Comic like, books, Matt. Comic books. <laughs> I got you, Zercher. Come on, man. Like, yeah. just look it up. It's they're not hard to find on Google. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. But no, I, I really like this issue. I'm really enjoying action like I thought I would. And the, the scary thing is, is, this is the weaker of the two Superman books, but it's still really good. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, the other one's much more personal. This one's more plot, so. Well, yeah. I, I, it's in know, the name. Depends on what action, you like. Yeah, yeah, this is the action one. The other one is the more reserved. Right. Yeah. But it's good. There's room for both. You can do good versions of both, and we should be getting that, so. Yeah. Yeah. And I definitely think this was a better issue than the first one. Yeah. Yeah. No complaints. The positivity continues until he sh- who shall not be named uh, interrupts it in a couple of months. <laughs> uh, I have a feeling I've got a feeling one or two of the new ones next month might be more lukewarm. But well, well, obviously that's part of the excitement is to see when that first that first happens. Uh, but so to round off this week, then in terms of books, we have Justice League Fifty Two, which was originally meant to be Justice League Fifty One. Which was originally meant to be a Green Lanterns related story, <laughs> uh, but now it's written by Dan Jurgens, who also does action, of course. Uh, art by yeah. Tom Grummet, and uh, this was a story about Lex Luthor, which uh, is set before the events of Action Comics. It ties, yep. it, it sort of leads nicely into it by the end, and uh, despite the fact that this is the last issue of a New Fifty Two series. It is clearly set in rebirth sort of time because when the Justice League show up to see what Lex is up to, Wonder Woman specifically is wearing her well, it's technically the old outfit, but you know, the new outfit, the rebirth outfit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And Clark and not Clark, uh, Bruce and Diana even share a little moment where like, should we tell him about the other? And he's like, No no, not until he's ready to go public. So that yeah. it's it's clearly sort of like setting up a timeline of events where Mm-hmm. This is probably set after the first Justice League. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. But it's certainly after they've met him in Death of Superman and all that, and after maybe a couple of other things. Like maybe after Superman issue one where they go to meet him for the first time at the house. Yeah. You know, like. Yeah. You yeah, know, it's uh, set in a timeline, which is great. Yeah. They're all kind of fitting in there. We're getting ideas. Yeah. yeah. You Which's... know, logistically, when these come out in trades, I'm assuming. This is going to be in the action trade at the start of that. Yeah, yeah. I, I would also expect the last issue just like to be in the maybe the Titans. Which, which leads me to another question: mm-hmm. Do stories like this, which depend so much on rebirth, have that one shot at the start of the first trade? I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think so because because yeah. some of them lead right to the other, right? Yeah, or like things like this, Flash, week. Titans. Yeah, like. I think they've got to have it. Sure. I feel like I feel like if nothing else, DC Rebirth, the one shot, will be in the Titan Shred. Yeah. If nothing else, that's the one that has to have it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, it could appear in Flash Nellas. too. Flash you know? too. Yeah, potentially. Yeah. In fact, it would even surprise me if Flash Rebirth was also in that Titans yeah. trade. Good. That'd be a meaty first trade. It would be, but then uh, maybe the first arc's only four issues for all we know. So maybe. It, yeah, yeah, that's true. I don't know. Yep. Uh, but you know, I, I can see that being a thing. Uh. But we're not here to worry about that. We're here to talk about uh, no. uh, Justice League. Lex here. being Superman. Lex being Superman. Yeah, I I didn't actually. It's funny that uh, these last two issues of Justice League that were really just one shots for various rebirth things, I enjoyed probably more than I had Justice League in quite some time. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I enjoyed the, the run overall, but I feel like Dark yeah, Side too, War yeah. was a bit of a. It was, a, it was a little over long. Yeah, it was a slog. Yeah. The, last, the last half of Dark Side War was just kind of... The delays tedious. didn't help. Delays yeah. didn't help, and it just felt like it was the same fighting for like five issues towards the end. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's... Uh, it, it, first of all, the idea that Daily Planet's got Superman's cape uh, in a case is kind of cool. Uh, which, of course, Lex then uh, buys the Daily Planet so he can get the cape, which, of course, is just... Such- such a dick. I know, it's such a billionaire dick move. It's a classic that? Lex, though, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't expect anything less. Yeah. So, so and, and it's got a nice thread through who he's talking or he's in the narrating mm. is he's talking to someone. And at first I thought he's talking to Superman, right? The one that, that disintegrated. Yeah. So the reveal at the end I thought was really nice. 
Yeah, that's your uh, sister. Yeah, it's Lena. Who <laughs> tried to shoot him, and yeah. he reminds us that. Oh, that's right. I, yeah. I kind of forgot. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. measles virus. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> that was a oh, while no. ago now. Cause yeah. That, yeah, that was the prelude to Dark Side War, because she said, oh, I'll Dark Side. Ah, yeah. You know? so, if, if, <laughs> yeah we're getting yeah, to details yeah. now that <laughs> we're starting but to. But yeah, but so it, it still confirms, like, you know, he's still, even though she tried to murder him, he's still there for her. Yeah, yeah, because he, 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 it's actually kind of a nice human touch to Lex that you don't always yeah. get. Where j- jumping straight to the end here when he when he's talking about how he wants her to be proud of her when he wakes yep. when she wakes up, uh, because you know you you'll be the proud brother of the guy who's going to be known as Superman, which of course we know is going to be there's going to be a few hitches in that plan, such as you know actual Superman showing up. But yeah. uh, uh, I love how in that frame there the, there's just the American flag yeah. behind him yeah. to the side. It just it works so well. And it's waving the exact obviously because of the wind, but just even the way it's drawn looks almost identical to the cape. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's very, very deliberate. And then at the bottom it says Lexi's story continues in Action Comics. Oh, that was clearly meant to be out before Action Comics started, but oh well. Yeah. <laughs> and I think why I like this so much is I always like seeing Lex when he believes he's the good guy. Mm. Yeah. And it's it's one of the key things is why Lex is probably my favorite villain in general because he most of the time does believe he's in the right, and that's yep. just much more interesting for Do me. You know, I don't. I'm not just doing this because there was a time when everyone wanted uh, Brian Cranston to play him, but there is actually kind of a correlation to Walter White in a weird way because until yep. the end of Breaking Bad, which I won't spoil. Don't worry, I'm not going to spoil Breaking Bad yeah. for anyone who's not seen it. But if you haven't seen it, what are you doing with your life? Yeah, watch yeah. Breaking Bad. But a big part of Walter White's character is that he always thinks he's doing everything that he's doing for the right reasons. And right. that he... He doesn't maybe... He sees it as noble. Like he sees it as, you know, there's a thing that he always says he's doing it for, which, you know, gets a little bit more revealed towards the end and as the character yeah. grows. But it feels kind of like that in a lot of ways to me with Lex and the way that he always sees what he's doing as the good guy and whatever bad thing he's doing, it's like, this justifies... Yep. Yeah. What the ultimate goal is. Well, that, that's always in the best Superman origin stories. Lex is the hero of the city, yeah. and then Superman shows up and steals the spotlight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then he's like, well, that dude's an alien. I'm better than that. I'm going to show him. And that's almost every single. I mean, he becomes president of the United States in the old. Yeah. Basically, just to spite Superman. So. Why not? That's, that's kind of what Lex is. Yeah. yeah. So and and here I like that he wants Superman's cape because um, my question is then who's Trump spiting because it feels very similar. <laughs> <laughs> he's spiting the American people. That's who he's spiting. <laughs> oh, but let's, let's be honest, Lex Luthor's closer to being a billionaire than Trump is. So that's, <laughs> all right. that's Lex Luthor's a fictional character, kind of like Trump is. Uh. So, but um, but what I was gonna say is the fact that he wants Superman's cape. Because he feels that's what makes Superman. Yeah, it's the you iconography know? of it, isn't it? Right, yeah. and I'll make them forget that one. Yeah, and he he will be that, but better. Which is right. kind of a noble goal. Like, I'm going to be even yeah. better than that. Just yeah. for the wrong reasons. <laughs> reasons. For personal ego, not for the betterment of the world. Yeah, yeah. exactly. God, he's such a dick and I love it. He's my favorite <laughs> villain too. Yeah. So. Yeah, um... He's not quite my favourite, but no, he's, yeah. he's strong for all the reasons that you two have mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, so, I mean, that's pretty much this issue. I mean, it's just sort of, we see him sort of do his first sort of like tackling a bit of crime and the person he's trying to save is scared of him. Because, yeah, yep. of, course, of course she is. <laughs> uh, so it's just sort of some nice moments like that. But it flowed really well. It got Lexi's voice down. He had a bit of more humanity to him. But, you know, it's still very much Lex. It's still very much, you know, read, reading between the lines, you still see all of his faults and why he is ultimately a villain, usually. Yeah. Um, so, and I had that really nice moment at the end. So, um, I just want to say, I do wish this had been released on time because I feel yeah. like reading action again after this adds more to the Lex because I actually know what Lex's current mindset is in that. Yeah. So his his debating with Superman feels more a bit more genuine after reading this. Yeah. Um, I also say I did like the art and the colors were nice and bold. Yeah. I love the the double page spread where the Justice League show up. Everything's very bright and vivid. I really like it. Yeah. It is. It's very clean. The art, isn't it? Yeah. Which yep. 
I think it's a little bit too contrasting with action for me, where Zerch has got it's it's a lot more shadowy Needed. and yeah, yeah, and there's a lot more darker touches in there. It is, but it's, I'm, I, it doesn't bother me too much, especially since this is this weird holdover one shot thing from a it previous is. series. It is. It's just weird where Lex is this. Where, where this issue where it's focused on Lex is the clean cut lines and the bright <laughs> colours, whereas the when it when it focuses on Superman and it's it's more muted and there's darker mm-hmm. there and it's it's just interesting. That's true. I think it's just two artistic styles. I don't, I don't think I think that's less about thought and more about well, okay who's available to do this issue, which is yeah, two weeks late. So it just it, it plays in nicely to Lex thinking he's the hero. Yeah. Yep. All right, uh, that's uh, all your books this week. Now, here's where I would normally tell you what's coming next week, and I would uh, well, actually no, we need to do a rankings as well. But I'll I'll do this. I'll get this out of the way first, uh, and I would say this is what's coming next week. What are we most excited for? Well, I'll tell you what's coming next week from DC Comics. That's at least relevant to what we'd be covering. Nothing because it's a fifth yeah. Wednesday, and they have some annuals for some old Fifty Two series, but nothing uh, that we we're going to be covering. So, what we're going to do next week? We don't want to skip a week. We don't want to take a week off. So we're going to take the week gap as an opportunity to do a retrospective discussion on the New 52, what we thought when it was announced, our experiences at the start of it, how it evolved as time went on, all that kind of thing. And just have a sort of nice chat for about an hour about the New 52. Um, so hopefully that sounds interesting. Uh, and if you don't care about that, then no worries. We'll see you for episode 7 in a couple of weeks. Uh, yes, I promise though I will not yell the entire time. <laughs> but we're just going to have yelling. to be very careful when we bring up Superman that, yes. that's not oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's what's going to happen next week on the show <clears throat> um, but yeah let's, let's do rankings for this week then see see what comes number one I think as we get more and more books so I'm going to have to stop ranking the whole thing and just do like a top three because we're going top to get to the, three and a bottom yeah maybe the, yeah, the worst one yeah because I feel like doing when we get to the point where we have 10 books it's like oh i need to remember them all first of all hon yeah, <laughs> yeah. uh but now enough now it's easy enough to uh do the whole whole whack uh right. so who would like to go actually let's do matt first i'm really curious to see where matt Damn ranks it. things I, i'm organizing them right now but i'm gonna shock the world and uh i think wonder woman was my favorite of, okay. of, and then action comics uh, Detective, Flash, what am I forgetting? Um, Aquaman and Justice League. Yeah, and then probably Justice League and Aquaman. But they're all. Is this the first week good. Matt hasn't picked a Superman book first? No, no. Because no. two weeks ago I picked Flash. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so you did. There you go. Sorry. Uh, Connor? Uh, I'm going to go with Detective first, then Wonder Woman, then Action, Flash, Justice League, Aquaman. Um, I really struggled this week I want to say this before I actually say this because I feel like the top four of them could juggle oh, very close yeah, yeah. I, I know I know my first one but those next three yeah. like... see even for me I don't think there's one that I specifically knew right that's the that's the book of the week for me like it feels like this week is so consistent for the most yeah. part that it was really hard to yeah there's a cat's tail in the screen Matt very funny. <laughs> take it take it <laughs> It's just uh, you just acted like nothing was going on. I I'm used to it. I'm, it's, it's I know. Right. Uh, for people who are not used to my cats, this is a uh, Firefly, the ginger cat who's uh, invading the screen space. For the audio listeners, you don't care. You're just you're just curious as to why Matt's laughing. I'm I'm letting you know. But yeah, <laughs> so I think for me, and I went back and forth, and I really didn't want to because I wanted to shake up things. But I'm going to go with Detective. Um, and the reason why I watched, the reason why I didn't want to is because now I've done uh, Superman, Batman, Superman, Batman in right. terms of my picks, and I really want to pick an on Batman Superman book at one point. It'll, it'll happen. It'll, it'll happen. Just, it'll just happen. Maybe not next time. Um, then number two, Wonder Woman, and then the Flash, then Action, mm-hmm. and then Act. Man and then Justice League. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm going with that. I'm going with that. Uh, so yeah, those are my picks. But all worth reading. Now I think well, we should add on a, a little thing here at the end because it's the end of the month. I mean, we've got one more episode, but there's no more DC Rebirth books. But you know, right. this is the first month of books. We've done that. 
So I want everyone to say their favourite book overall from the month, right? Um, not necessarily favourite issue specifically, just, you know, out, out of the nine we've got so far, what's your favourite? Mm-hmm. And least favourite, although I think least favourite might be, at least it's obvious to me, I, I, don't, I don't know if you guys share my sentiment, but Connor, what is your favourite book that started this month from DC? It's it's going to have to be Detective Comics. It's just so fun, and it was something that I wasn't expecting as well. Whereas with the others that I've loved, I was expecting them a bit more. With this, Tinian, I expected good or average, because it's kind of been hit or miss, whereas this was mm-hmm. actually just great, and it really surprised me. Lowest? I'm trying to just remember what the other week's books are, just for yeah. sure. <laughs> no, yeah, it's, it's, it's Green Lands. Okay. Uh, Matt? Probably Superman. This is like Tomasi and Gleason. Um, we've had the rebirth in one issue, but it, that first issue is really strong. Yeah, that's it's a close second out. for me. Uh, and then I'd have to go with Green Lanterns. As much as I like that concept, it's just it's it's just okay. So, cool. Uh, I also have to pick Superman uh, as my favorite. Um, do, it like feels- he he did. Superman, Batman, Superman, Batman, Superman. Hey, well, it stands uh, to reason my favourite book would be one of the two that I'd picked before. I understand that, but you could have gone detective and just messed up the whole order, but you didn't, uh, yeah. so I appreciate that. Uh, Superman's my favourite so far, and worst, I have to agree with you too, Green Lanterns is... Uh... It's still, like, fine. I think the thing with Green Lanterns is the, the, the two characters' relationship is good, Yeah, the, plot the story is yeah. just kind of there. The plot's just the least exciting. Um, yeah. But I think what we can all agree, though, uh, is how encouraging this month has been. Yep, definitely. Uh, we it's sales sales are like all time oh, highs. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I believe that Green Arrow. I don't know if this was the rebirth issue or the issue one, but it was something like it sold twelve thousand percent more than what the new Fifty Two Green. I Arrow think that was the seen. the rebirth one because yeah. that sold more than even the first Kevin Smith. Green Arrow issues. Yeah, but it was like a ridiculous over a thousand percent more. Yeah, it was in staggering. Sales. Uh, but I wasn't even referring to sales. I mean, that's a good point, Matt. But I was just like, just in terms of liking all the books and feeling that mm. we got all these characters back and just my enthusiasm for comics right now. And I think it's different. The, just the variety of what's in the books. Yeah, like none of them feel the same. Like there, there's no New Fifty Two house style. They're all very different. The colors yeah, and, feel different, and even the two Bat books feel distinctly different. The two Superman books feel distinctly different. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but all four of them are good, which is insane. Like, when was the last time Superman, Batman, Action, and Detective were all worth reading? Been a while. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, so, probably before I started no. reading singles. <laughs> well, and and again, the only reason I brought the sales is because there was a a little while back at the end of the new Fifty Two. Uh, before Rebirth was really announced, that, that DC didn't have a top a book in like the top ten. I believe you know? on this week the Comicsology's top ten. Every single one of them is right. DC Rebirth, and that, yeah. that that that's based on sales. Right. Yeah. So I think yeah. Bef- towards the end of the New Fifty Two, Batman and Justice League were the only ones that ever yeah sort of charted high. Um, now, obviously, it'll dip a bit. There's a lot of issue one thing going on with a lot of buy extras and variants and whatever. But I think what this says to me, uh, more than anything else, is just how many people want to read DC but weren't because it just yeah, it wasn't good. It was in a bad place. Um, yeah. I think the excitement from people who maybe haven't read in a few years because oh shit, my characters are coming back. You know. It should yep. immediately tell DC, it's like, yeah, this was the right choice. This is what people want. Because it, well, obviously it'll cool down a bit in terms of the sales, but I think when, you know, I think in six months or whatever, eight months, ten months, whenever they want to look at it again, see where it's like all leveling off. I think mm-hmm. the the leveled off numbers will be a lot healthier than what it was before. Yeah, me too. I think so. And it helps that there's a quality there. All the books are different. Like, like you were saying. Um, Batman and Detective are both distinct, and Superman and Action Comics are both distinct. Yeah. You know, and so when you had the new 52 come in, everything was just kind of the same. And do you know what what I like about them double shipping as well? When the new 52 started, not to get into new 52 stuff too much, but there was four 
Batman books, not Bat Family. Like there's four Batman books. Batman, yeah. Yeah, and I like that bec- they can still have four Batman books a month, but it's just you know double enough two series, so it doesn't feel like you're getting oh, two shitty ones as well. You know, like yeah. it's, it's just the next issues are the ones you like. So I like that, and obviously we'll get All Star Batman come uh, August, which yeah. I'm looking forward to. But that again, that's like uh, that should feel distinct because it's its own own thing. So. Uh, no, I, I just wanted to wrap up by saying it's been a really good first month and we are all very enthusiastic. So even though, you know, there'll likely be a couple of the new ones next month maybe that we won't love, uh, yeah. it doesn't really matter. We're not going to like all of them. The, that's the no. thing. Like Even here, you can see that for people with different tastes, like like action and Superman. One, if you want your, your more personal story. One, if you like your big bombastic action story. Mm-hmm. Some people don't like one or kind of the story or the other or I have mm. preferences leaning towards one or the other yeah it's also it's also interesting to me when I see uh, people who watch or listen to the show uh, give us their sort of favourites and their rankings yeah. which people have been doing in the uh, YouTube comments and okay. whatever else so I guess that's a nice segue into the plugging mm-hmm. you can let us know things obviously in the comments on YouTube but you can also let us know on Twitter at mailed underscore fuzz or email us mailed fuzz at gmail dot com uh, you can also get all of us individually and in certain places and other shows. Connor, where can the good people find you? On Twitter, you can find me at Connor94, and you can talk me. You can find me talking about TV on the Almost Cancelled podcast with a, a lot of comic book shows. Usually, usually, just not right now. There's only a couple right now. Yeah, you can talk me. I like, I like that. That was a, yeah. that was a fun slip of <laughs> tongue. It was. Uh, Matt. Yeah. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Matt of Steel 57 and talking about movies on uh, 1.21 gigawatts, <laughs> Mild we're, Fuzz Movies Podcast. We're both at it tonight. Yeah, we are. It's yeah. I'm tired of my allergies, man. Living in the desert sucks. Oh, uh, my. You can find me on Twitter at Wibble89. You can also find me on the Screams After Midnight Horror Podcast. Me and the professor Tim Vargulish talk about horror movies every week. Uh, in fact, we've been doing we've been double shipping recently. We've been two, doing two episodes a week. So, uh, if you're into horror movies, check that out. Uh, but that's us, guys. Uh, that's been episode five. That is the end of the first full month of DC Rebirth. We're looking forward to month two. I'm actually pissed that we don't get any more books next week. It's crushing me that we have to wait two weeks now. Uh, but we'll have a discussion about the new Fifty Two <coughs> next week. So. Uh, hopefully you'll come back for that if not we'll see you in two weeks so thank you very much guys Uh, and as always don't get trapped in the speed force and long live them legion oh my god I'm terrible (laughs)